company that carries on the legacy of the man who transformed the world. In so many ways, Henry Ford was a simple man. Henry Ford might not have been the one who first made the car, but he sure was the man who took it mass by rolling out America's every man's car, which became a rage. But the brilliance of Henry Ford didn't end in the cars he rolled out or the fact that he made sure that every worker in his factory could afford one. It also manifested itself in the company he created went through one of the worst crises possible. But if you've been around as long as Ford has, ups and downs are part of life. And with so much to cover, I sat down with Michael Bonham, Ford's India head, to find out how things were right now here, when the great Indian growth story was being questioned. Well, I think uh, the Indian market's uh, going through a short-term tough phase, Mini, at this point. I think, uh, you know, we've got high interest rates, we've got high inflation, so the RBI is in a bit of a difficult scenario. They can't take down the uh, interest rates until they see inflation being controlled. That has a big impact here in India in the car market because 70% of all cars sold here are sold via finance. Tell me, if you were to compare it to 2011, is it worse or is it looking slightly better? Because 2011 was really bleak. Well, I think what we're seeing, Siam have just revised down their targets uh, for growth from 11 to 12% to 9 to 10%. We would see the industry <coughs> about the same level um, in terms of growth. So we still are seeing growth. This is in the passenger and commercial segments. Um, so whilst there is all this difficulty in the market, we've got to actually pinch ourselves occasionally and say there's still 10% growth in the passenger commercial segment. Versus 2011, I think it's about the same level. Uh, and if the global environment doesn't improve uh, reasonably rapidly, it'll probably get a little worse. But you know, uh, what is interesting from the Ford context, uh, Michael, is the fact that you work in multiple markets. How are you actually viewing the slowdown? Is it a temporary blip in the Indian story? Because, you know, we've had a great run. We've yeah. had, we've hit a speed breaker quite literally. Yeah. So when you look at big investment plans, big plans into India, how are you pacing yourself? Well, you know, we've uh, really uh, demonstrated significant confidence in the long-term future of the Indian industry, and that hasn't faltered. Um, we've committed a billion dollars in Chennai, and we announced uh, about a year ago an additional billion dollars of commitment to a new facility in uh, Gujarat and we haven't taken our foot off the accelerator on that investment despite these short-term difficulties. And you're right, I've been in the industry 27 years and we have seen peaks and valleys in extreme difficulties in the industry. If we go back to 2008 in the, the US, for example, we're seeing significant issues in Europe right now. Um, here in India, our view is uh, very, very strongly that th we will get through these short-term difficulties. We'll continue to invest. We have to make sensible, rational decisions in the short term. But from a longer-term perspective, we haven't changed our laser-like focus. A company like Ford is looking at the larger opportunity despite the odds in India. And that's not surprising, given what it has gone through at home in the US in 2008 when a rapidly collapsing economy sent shockwaves through the automobile giants of Detroit. Ford was the only one who didn't file for bankruptcy. So what had gone wrong and what saved Ford? No one saw the financial crisis uh, coming as rapidly as it did with the Lehman collapse and so on and then how rapidly that moved through the uh, money markets and then the tightening and the credit squeeze that, that occurred, that, that drove in the, uh, the business world in total, including automotive. So the answer is we had, with Alan Mullally coming on board, we were very fortunate to have Alan come on board and work with us when we were looking at our plans uh, in 2007 as we moved into 2008 to take out, I suppose, the world, as Alan called it, the world's biggest home loan uh, mortgage, uh, which was $20 billion of borrowing. And we had that $20 billion prior to the tightening of the credit markets, which um, was a very 
you could say fortuitous, well planned, whatever you want to call it. Um, the bottom line is we had it there and we were able to continue on our course despite our competitors uh, having to declare uh, bankruptcy. It is estimated that at the height of the crisis in 2008, Ford was losing $100 million a day. And reports suggest that the company had to tighten its belts like never before. But what worked for Ford then was timing. Just two years before, Alan Mulally, the new CEO of the company, had come on board, seen the signs, raised money and started a clean-up. Alan, or <coughs> when he arrived, made us reflect as a total company on how we were situated and what we were about as a brand and a, and a, and a corporation. We were Ford Motor Company with a significant number of brands and the Blue Oval was one of those brands. And Alan really made us stop, think and reflect and focus on the Ford brand, one Ford. And by focusing on that, that meant all of the acquisitions we had done and grown and stretched ourselves across, to be quite frank, paying attention to a large number of brands makes it very difficult to focus on the core brand. And so we were working very hard prior to the crisis to rationalise our So business. you were lucky that the rationalisation happened before well, the Well, we crisis. were in the process of rationalising. Volvo, for instance, happened after the crisis and so on, but uh, Land Rover, Jaguar and so on, we were working uh, to bring ourselves back to the Blue Oval and that's the great one forward process and one forward principle that Alan drove into us. Focusing on the core, the Blue Oval, that is Ford, helped the company in the tough patch. All the way from the late 1980s, Ford had been on an acquisition spree, lapping up some of the biggest luxury car brands in the world. These cost big money and also hurt the company. Mulali's bid to get out of them, including Land Rover and Jaguar, which he sold to the Tatas in the nick of time, helped Ford get through the tough patch. But the big success for the company came when it went back to some of its founder Henry Ford's most basic principles, making affordable cars and looking outside the US. And that's exactly what Alan Mulally did as he pushed Ford to focus on the compact segment and the fast-growing Asia-Pacific region. Thinking about it, $500 million investment at that time was a very significant investment on behalf of the company. and so. The, the company was recognising the importance of Asia-Pacific and the growth opportunities that were emerging out of Asia-Pacific. They were seeing it in China, rapid growth, and, the, and they were seeing it here in India, off a lower base, obviously, relative to China. But And it all gets back to GDP, PPP. What is happening? This is where all our growth projections, all our strategies get back to what is going on in China and what's happening in India in terms of the growth of the middle class, the growth of GDP, PPP average, and there's the takeoff points that occur when, for instance, here in India and in China, it's just about the same level. You see an average GDP, PPP between four and a half through to about $6,000. Takeoff occurs. People move from two-wheelers to four-wheelers. People move from bicycles to two-wheelers. And it's a momentum that won't stop. We are still on track. Our view is, yes, there'll be dips, uh, peaks and valleys. There'll be times when we run at 15 to 20% growth. Two years ago, we ran at 30% growth. Not sustainable. The slowdown in the Indian economy has pushed companies like Ford to temper their ambitions. But the external environment is not the only thing this company has had to grapple with. It has had a difficult run in India. And it's only two years back that it began to get it right. More on that when we return. <laughs>